It's about uh, 2 a.m. in the morning here in Oklahoma City, and it looks like we've had another significant outbreak of tornadoes. My name is Chris, and I'm the Divisional PIO, and even though it's late, I need to get a news release together before tomorrow morning's newscasts. Now, here's the thing. While it's critically important to get a news release out as fast as possible in the first 24 hours after disaster, it's also pretty likely that we don't have a lot of information. That's okay. People don't expect you to have all the answers early in a disaster operation, and that makes it very easy and quick to develop a very basic four-paragraph news release. So, I've got my computer ready, a 24-hour news channel on the TV, lots of notes that I took when I spoke to some of the core officers involved, and most importantly, this big cup of coffee. So, let's get writing. The best and easiest way to start is to begin with a news release template, like this one. A template is a bit like a road map that will help you get where you're going, and the first blanks to fill are for a point of contact. Who can the media follow up with for more information? Most of the time, this will be whomever is filling the role of the public information officer on the disaster event. The most important thing to remember is that whatever contact numbers or email address you put in here, be sure they really do work and that the PIO can check these regularly. On a disaster site, cell and internet services may not be very reliable. Sometimes it's best to use a point of contact that is well outside the disaster area, and who has reliable coverage, and then let them coordinate with the media and set up interviews with on-site personnel. This helps prevent the media from getting frustrated because they can't get in touch with the designated contact point. Oh, you can and should add in a Twitter address if it's used solely for business purposes. Okay, so next, a headline. The Salvation Army responds to tornadoes. That, my friends, is an awful headline. While it may be accurate, it doesn't tell us a whole lot. A great headline provides information and contains key words that people are likely to search to get more information. This is better. The Salvation Army of Oklahoma responds to widespread tornado outbreak. This headline answers three core questions. Who is responding to what and where? Your headline should do the same. Next, add a summary paragraph, which is a very short synopsis of the information contained in the release. Okay, now onto the substance of our news release. Our first paragraph is called the lead paragraph and begins with something called a dateline. The dateline should list a city, state, and date. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, April 6, 2014. The city should be where the incident occurred, unless of course the event covers multiple areas, like this one, in which case you'll want to use the city where divisional headquarters or your incident command post is located. The first or lead paragraph of a news release announces what you have to say, providing answers to as many of the critical who, what, when, where, and why questions as possible. These are the questions your readers care about. Most importantly, keep the lead paragraph compelling and simple. State what happened and what the Salvation Army is doing about it. And here's what I came up with. Our lead paragraph clearly describes the Salvation Army's response efforts so far and provides a bit of perspective on this incident. I got the number of canteens deployed from my phone call to the divisional EDS director, and the rest, well, I generalized after watching the local news channel, which has been showing pictures of the damage most of the evening. Your next two paragraphs should provide a bit more details about the Salvation Army's relief efforts. Include details that support your story, add interest, or reinforce what you're trying to say. These can include quotes from key staff or disaster survivors, statistics, or service locations. Since this is early on in a disaster, it's hard to have a whole lot of details, or any statistics yet, but that really doesn't need to be the focus. Instead, I want to highlight the fact that the Salvation Army is present and responding to this emergency, and add in a quote that brings a bit of the human element into the story. For a disaster news release, the fourth and final paragraph is generally a call to action, it can be a call to support this specific disaster relief effort, or if the event is very small, a call to support the overall work of the Salvation Army and the community. It is best to always include at least three ways for people to give, by telephone, by mail, and online, and to have this giving information planned out long before the disaster occurs. If you have one, a text to give number may also be added. Okay, 
That's just about it. For a first news release on a disaster, three to four paragraphs is ideal. I just need to finish up our news release with the traditional triple hashtags that denote the end of the story and the standard Salvation Army boilerplate. By definition, boilerplate content is a unit of writing that can be used over and over without change. Now that I've finished writing, I still need to do two things. Get this approved for release, and more importantly, proofread what has been written and correct mistakes. Nothing damages your credibility more than a misspelling or a typo. Ah, like this one. Canteens aren't kitchens on heels, they're kitchens on wheels. Okay, now to get this approved and disseminated. 